Hello. The Warhammer world has always been plagued by monsters and woeful wonders, but in 1985 things would change forever. Now they'd come in the form of Rat. I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today we're looking at the lamentably loathsome legends and vile history of the Skaven. It's been a long time coming, but we finally made it. Sprit spray your fear musk, because we're going to be looking at the Rat Boys. The Skaven have become one of the most iconic and indeed unique races in the Warhammer world. Foul and loathsome Ratmen whose dark designs plague the empires of Man, Dwarf and Elf, and they don't get along that well with anybody else either. These guys are so hardy and so integral to storytelling in Warhammer that they even survived the destruction of the world that was, going on to infest and burrow through the mortal realms of the Age of Sigmar as well. We're going to start by looking at some history, but don't worry, I'm not going to be repeating every word twice twice. The Skaven, Lords of Decay, the foul brood of Chaos Ratmen. From city to city their passages take them dark agents of entropy, eternally gnawing at the fabric of order, so that all falls into ruin. That is how the Skaven were introduced to the Warhammer world. These guys came out of the gate swinging hard, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's just pause for a second. I consider most history of Warhammer to be mutable. Every version of the game, every army book, everything that comes out changes and revises and expands what's come before it. And the fun part is that you can take the bits that you enjoy the most and make that into your version of the Warhammer world. If you were to do that with the Skaven though, you probably would have almost exactly the same version in every person's headcanon, and that's because the Skaven have had one of the most robust and consistent laws in all of Warhammer history. These guys have barely changed because they were so well formed from the second they arrived. They were first glimpsed by an instantly adoring public in the Third Citadel Compendium. Published in December 1985, this compendium, which acted as a catalogue in the early years of Games Workshop, featured images of the first range of these so-called Chaos Ratmen. All of them were sculpted by Jess Goodwin, and each one absolutely oozes character and interest. Even with the Skaven pictured in the compendium and available to buy, it still wasn't clear who these Ratmen were, or whether they would become Warhammer royalty or just another bunch of chaotic castoffs, like the Snake Men that debuted in the same issue. In the following year's Third Citadel Journal, published in April 1986, that question would be put to bed permanently. The Skaven would debut in the scenario Vengeance of the Lichmaster, a sequel to the campaign pack Terror of the Lichmaster that introduced the first special character and indeed supervillain into the Warhammer world. Suffice it to say that earlier in 86, Rick Priestley designed a set of scenarios that tracked the re-emergence of Lichmaster Heinrich Kemmler and his chaotic skeleton buddy Krell as they wandered the valleys of the Border Princes. This time though, they seek to besiege the monastery of La Maison Tal a card building that was actually printed on the inside covers of this issue of the journal. But in a coincidence unfortunate for the Lichmaster, and really unfortunate for the monks, at the same time a bunch of peculiar chaotic ratmen have also arrived to try to get into the monastery. These ratmen are here with a mission of their own. They want to recover their stolen artifact, the Black Ark of the Covenant. The scenario is full of wonderful and absurd details, including the fact that the monks of Maison Tal have actually built a Dalek. At the time, there was a range of Citadel Doctor Who miniatures, so they've used the Dalek on the token for the mechanical warrior that the monks have been building. The rest of the journal issue was heavy on rectacular Skaven content. A huge article written by Goodwin and Priestley introduced the background to the race. In an interview on the long defunct Games Workshop Design Studio podcast, Jez Goodwin talked about the process through which the Skaven came into being. He said, I've got a great idea for these rat-headed goblins. So I went away and made some, and started writing background and doing illustration. And I eventually gave all the notes over to Rick, and Rick put it into something that made some sense, and wrote it up. 
Jez Goodwin Skaven were not the first, but I'd say that they're probably the most long-lasting and influential. In his 1968 novel The Swords of Lankmar, part of the noteworthy fantasy series Fafford and the Grey Mouser, author Fritz Leiber introduces his heroes to a legion of intelligent rats. Rats so strategic and evil that they are able to gaslight and then occupy an entire city. In the 1985 Ian Livingston gamebook Temple of Terror, part of the fighting fantasy series, it is possible to encounter mutant half-human half-rat creations known as Ratmen. Even animation legend Don Bluth had explored a colony of talking rat folk in 1982's The Secret of Nim, itself an adaptation of the Robert C. O'Brien novel Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, published in 1972. And whilst it's entirely possible that any or all of those inspirations could have influenced and informed Jez Goodwin's creation of the Skaven, I believe that the secret to their longevity is the society that he created for them. In fact, it's remarkable just how much of the Skaven lore that we know and love today was present and correct in that first appearance in 1986. Everything from the iconography, to the religion, the Great Horned Rat, the Council of Thirteen, the Graysears and Warpstone obsession, all of that, and the four great clans. One of the clans detailed is Clan Eshen, masters of stealth, poison, and assassination. In fact, the very name Eshen seems to be inspired by the name Hashishin, a term associated with the original order of assassins that operated for 200 years from around 1100 CE. The fetid clan Pestilence brings with them plague and death. These are the most fanatical disciples of the Horned Rat, with many rotting monks and acolytes counted amongst their number. Clan Skaya are the mad engineers, and the main most rats responsible for the vast armory of the Skaven. Goodwin was inspired by the soldiers, weaponry, and horrors of the First World War, and the Skaya have built a terrifying collection of fearful tools with which to cruelly dispatch their enemies. My personal favourite of the clans has always been Mulder. These mad biologists are the rat folk in charge of creating and mastering the awful and awesome rat ogres, towering monstrosities big of muscle and small of brain. Mulder also make for great pack masters and lead many of the rat swarms and other foul beasts of their clan into battle. There's a real Island of Dr. Moreau vibe to these guys. Mention is also made of the Warlord clans, small packs and gangs of the strongest Skaven, but there's not too much detail on these guys just yet. Where there is detail though, is the table of possible mutations that your Skaven could have. Some of these are fantastic and terrifying. Iridescent fur, two heads, no face. Elsewhere in the Skaven special issue of the Citadel Journal, there is a Skaven painting guide by John Blanche. And there's even a Skaven appearance in the ongoing comic strip Caleb Dark, which I'm pretty sure includes the first examples of Skaven queakish language, the repetitious and excitably idiosyncratic way that Skaven talk speak to one another. And what of the name Skaven? Well, there's two stories circulating around this one, and one is fun and one is true. Well, they're both fun, but one is more fun. A rumour circulated for many years was that the name Skaven was a conflation of the phrase Here's Kevin, as heard regularly on British children's television show Roland Rat. In case you don't know him, Roland Rat is a superstar rat puppet who lived in a rat cave beneath King's Cross Railway Station, who was, for some reason, quite popular in the 1980s. It really makes me wonder if this is the Great Horned Rat we've been hearing so much about. The other story is that the name Skaven is derived from the word scavengers, except this time using a kicking K, because that's cooler and more chaotic. The Skaven were an immediate success, and they quickly became stalwarts of the Warhammer world. Skaven were included in the Plastic Fantasy Regiments box set in 1987, and a fully updated Skaven army list was one of the ten in the Warhammer 2nd edition expansion, Ravening Hordes, the official Warhammer Battle Army Lists book. This is where we get the first detailed rules for Rat Ogres and clearer differences between infantry choices like Night Runners, Storm Vermin, and Clan Rats. White Dwarf 86 set down a foundational stone on which a dynasty would be introduced. This was the first appearance of the Skaven in Blood Bowl. 
Written by Blood Bowl designer Jervis Johnson, this free team was called the Skaven Scramblers. Though the franchise would eventually move to Skaven Blight, it already featured its greatest star player, Glart Smashrip, the rippling rotund sphere of a rat. A new clan was added to the Skaven as well, Clan Rigens, a clan understandably obsessed with the bloody game of Blood Bowl. Jez Goodwin would go on to sculpt a range of minis for this verminous team for the game's second edition in 1988. And then in the third edition, sculptor Gary Morley stepped in to lend a helping mutant hand. After all, two heads are better than one. And nowadays, well, the Skaven Blight franchise is still going strong, notably aided by a load of lovely Forge World star players, including my personal favourite, of course, the new version of Glart Smash Rip, the Absolute Unit. The first edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay was released in 1986, and in its bestiary, there was an entry for the Skaven, but it would be later Wolfrup expansions and supplements that would really do justice to the Skaven as foe and foe. In a tragic business decision that would be repeated with Warhammer Quest many years later, a Skaven-focused scenario was cancelled before it could be written and released. Originally intended to be a chapter in the renowned Enemy Within campaign, the Horned Rat scenario was being developed by designer Phil Gallagher, who had intended to put together an adventure that would see the Skaven try and shoot the Chaos Moon Morseleb out of the sky and into the Empire. The scenario, or something like it, would eventually see publication in 2021, as part of the Cubicle 7 reprint of the Enemy Within campaign. A second edition Wolfrup supplement, Children of the Horned Rat, was released in order to explore the darker corners of the Skaven race, and the hidden history of these terrible rat folk. But that wouldn't actually be for a few more years. Back in 1989, Skaven were at the top of everybody's birthday, Christmas and Monstill lists, but you wouldn't have to look too far to get a box full of them, because the sequel to MB Games and Games Workshop's blockbuster board game, HeroQuest, was just around the corner. Advanced HeroQuest would have Skaven as its primary antagonist. And that was even though, or perhaps because, Skaven never actually appeared in the original HeroQuest game. There were some Ratman concept designs that never really made it, but you'd probably have to watch this video I made in order to find out more about them. A Skaven character was written up for a second edition of the magical quest game Talisman, and was later included in the box for the third edition of the game. Basically, like any good rats, the Skaven were just turning up everywhere. At Games Day 1989, there were a series of playoffs to determine the world's greatest Warhammer player. One such game pit the ordered and disciplined High Elf army of Paul Groves against the hunched and hellish horde of Skaven fielded by Andrew Reed. The battle report was detailed in depth in White Dwarf 117, and even featured some bespoke art to illustrate the armies and the battlefield. The intensely tactical face-off ran all the way to the 3 hour time limit, and sadly, the brave Skaven were defeated by just 100 points. If only Glart had been there. Rick Priestley and Jez Goodwin would return to the Skaven with a comprehensive article in November 1989's White Dwarf 119. Largely, this was a polished version of the original Citadel Journal article, but this new entry did include some important updates for Skaven history. The previously anonymous Warlord clans would be named with a couple of examples, Clan Rictus and Clan Moors being mentioned specifically. There would also be a little more information about the powerful war engine of the Skaven, the Screaming Bell but there still wouldn't be any illustrations or miniatures to represent it. Yet. In 1991, there was another White Dwarf feature on the vile and loathsome Ratmen, a deep dive into the Skaven army of one Andy Chambers. Issue 137 devoted several pages to this chamber of rats, even going on to explain how Andy had started his Skaven army after partaking in a particularly intense Head Office Mighty Empires campaign. As well as a ton of pictures of the incredible army itself, the article would go on to provide army building advice and tactics. It would be Andy Chambers who would lead the redesign of the Skaven race for the 4th edition of Warhammer, essentially adopting the entire army from Jez Goodwin after he moved on to other projects. In 1993, the first Warhammer Army's Skaven was released. 
This magnificent tome would tell the story of the Skaven like never before, offering more history about the origins, motivations, and actions of the Skaven over the entire timeline of the known world. Major additions to the Skaven army came in the form of new war machines. The Screaming Bell, that had been mentioned as early as the original Jez Goodwin and Rick Priestley launch article in Citadel Journal, had until now received no rules or models. The closest we'd come had been the scratch-built prototype that Andy Chambers had made for his own Skaven army, but even that we wouldn't see until many years later in White Dwarf 193. But now, the Screaming Bell could enter the battlefield in all of its unholy horned rat glory. The Doom Wheel also made its first appearance. Designed by Jez Goodwin and Norman Swales, this truly ridiculous rodent-powered marvel is as charming as it is deadly, and would become another mainstay of the Skaven army. We also get the first appearance of legendary Skaven special characters like Deathmaster Snitch, Plague Lord Skrulk, and Thankwall and his odd job of a henchman, Bone Ripper. Author Bill King also contributed a short story to the army book, and he would return to the subject of the Skaven in his later Gotrek and Felix works. Astonishingly, much of the range that was sculpted by Jez Goodwin would still be in service to the Horned Rat many decades later. In fact, as of right now, one of the oldest miniatures available from Games Workshop that you can field in Age of Sigmar is Plague Lord Skrulk, although he's got a name change now. Probably because it's really hard to say Plague Lord Skrulk without having to over enunciate. Skrulk was originally available in 1993, designed of course by Jez Goodwin, and that means that Skrulk is fully 30 years old. Not bad at all for a plague fueled rat. In 2001, the Black Library released an art book of Jez Goodwin's concept illustrations called The Gothic and the Eldritch. Amongst the many incredible sketches in this book are several concepts for something that has yet to come to pass in 40k, Space Skaven. Over the years, many have surmised that the oft-glimpsed but rarely detailed race of the Hrud were designed to be a Skaven analogy for 40k. An early appearance in a dangerous Xenos illustration even looks similar to one of Goodwin's concept sketches. It seems like things have changed over time though, and there have since been conflicting illustrations that don't really look remotely ratty. Over the years, the Skaven would appear in loads of games from Games Workshop, everything from Mighty Empires to Man of War to Mordheim, and they would become fantastic antagonists in video games for Warhammer as well. There is of course the classic Warhammer Shadow of the Horned Rat. I would love to stream this game, it's so so good. I would recommend just watching the cinematics to see how great Skaven dialogue can be delivered. It's fantastic even now if you can accept the sort of charming retro vibe of those graphics. And then of course there's the Vermintide games where you basically mash a load of Skaven non-stop in a cooperative battle through various different maps. It's great fun but I'm very sad to see so many rat boys get killed that way. The Loathsome Ratmen and All Their Vile Kin was a law book published in 2004, part of a wonderful series of in-universe books that offer terrific insights into the races of Warhammer. By the end of Warhammer 8th edition, the end times were upon us, and they would see the known world of Warhammer destroyed in totality. Though several characters and races from Warhammer Fantasy would eventually find their way into the lore of Age of Sigmar, the game that replaced Warhammer, it's hard to argue that anyone made it through the change as intact as the Skaven. In fact, they got some pretty major loric upgrades. Their great city of Skaven Blight became an interdimensional nexus. Even their god, the Great Horned Rat, would ascend to take its rightful place amongst the pantheon of the Chaos Gods. Sure, there were some tragic deaths, with most Skaven characters ending up as mortal remains rather than entering the mortal realms, but at least they played a major part in the final story of the Warhammer setting, a culmination of their many great and terrible schemes to get their filthy clawed hands on all of the warp stone in the world. We haven't been able to cover everything, but those are the major points in the history of the development of the Skaven. And I think in many ways we can all agree that the Skaven are the good guys, the real heroes of the Warhammer world.
yeah. So that was my history of the Skaven as a faction in Warhammer. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, to leave a comment, to subscribe, or to use the super thanks if that's something you do. I really appreciate every ounce of support that you've offered. It's incredibly humbling, so thank you so much. In April, I'm going to have some really big news. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to be teasing it a little bit on my Instagram and my Twitter, so feel free to follow me at Jordan Sorcery there. And of course, I'll be talking about it on the channel, so stick around for that soon. Oh, and you may have noticed throughout the video, but here is my new best friend. I'm sorry, Martha. I don't mean it, sort of. Here is a little close-up. I finally have the most adorable miniature from GW history, the Skaven Engineer from the cancelled Warhammer Quest Skaven expansion. I am so happy to have this guy. Hobby achievement unlocked. I just need to learn how to paint him now. Um, in any case, thank you very much for watching. I am Jordan, and this is Jordan Sorcery. Yes, yes, now our council is complete. We must decide when to strike at those pesky board princes. They will not keep keep the warp stone from us, no. What? Mm.